So I've seen it many times before. A lot of people that should not have a pit bull are getting a pit bull and it turns out to be something completely different. So today I'm giving you five reasons why you should not get a pit bull. Keep watching. Hey, how's it going? My name is Ruben. If you're new to the channel, this channel is all about the bull breeds, killing the bad stereotypes and becoming better owners. Now, today we're doing a little bit of a different take on my channel. This channel is all about the bull breeds, like I just said, but I'm going to give you five reasons why you should not get a pit bull. It's a little bit of an opposite effect of what I usually promote on this channel because I think they're great dogs, but they are ending up in people's hands that cannot handle them. There's a lot of owners out there that they get like puppy fever and they resort to a pit bull because they look awesome. They look amazing. They hear about the good stuff, but yet they don't know what comes with it. So without further ado, let's get into the reasons why you should not get a pit bull. Number one, they are expensive. Okay. It's just like having another child. In my opinion, I got two kids with these dogs. You got to buy them food. Now there's different types of food. You could buy the expensive kibble. If you go raw feeding route, that adds on to more of that. They need all the proper gear in order to get situated at your home, such as crates, dog bowls, harnesses, collars, leashes, all this stuff that comes with it, especially something like toys. They got to have the right supplements. If you're, you know, having a dog that has joint issues, you need to add on some supplements that are probably monthly that they have to take the rest of their life. You know what I mean? There's also vet expenses. You have to get your dog shots and dewormed and all that. If you don't know what you're doing, you got to take it to the vet and you got to let them handle it professionally and properly. So again, that's another expense that they got to add on. And one of the most important expenses that I see is training. Now, training doesn't always mean you have to pay for it, you know, money wise, but you got to invest your time into gaining the knowledge to training your dog properly. So I do think that's an expense too. Now that leads into number two, they require a lot of training. And what I mean by this is a long period of time. So minimum, what I think you should be doing a day is minimum of 30 minutes of training. You should do that every day. And um, might not be intentional training, but you're training your dog to have structure around the house. But training is very important. You need a lot of time dedicated to your dog to get that training in. And this could take years down the road. In my opinion, training really never stops. It's something that happens all their life. You might find yourself training them at moments where you didn't expect them to train, but it's called having structure, like I said. So yes, it does require a lot of training, minimum of 30 minutes a day. Number three, pit bulls can have unexpected health problems. Now, I know a lot of pit bull owners that you know, are in my group or in my audience have experienced skin allergies. That's one thing that a lot of the owners didn't expect. There's some skin allergies. There's hip dysplasia. That's something that you might have to consider. They could eventually get cancer. You know, sometimes your dog might have the genetics where the cancer bug ends up being in their blood and it travels down through the genes, okay? They could have, you know, a lot of skin problems and they could have unexpected surgeries. So just know when you're getting your dog or a pit bull, that problems do come with it. You know, nine times out of 10, you're going to have some kind of problem. Maybe it's not major, maybe it's minor, but you still going to have health problems no matter what. That's what I've seen late. You know, a lot of healthy dogs out there, maybe they tear an ACL when they're, you know, simply running in the park. It's something that happens that is unexpected. Maybe you could have prevented it, but it just still happens. So you got to think about these kind of things if you want to get in your dog. Number four, the pit bull could be potentially aggressive towards other dogs. Now, if you follow my channel, I covered some of the history of the American Pit Bull Terrier, but the American Pit Bull Terrier is naturally dog aggressive. Now, that is a gene that was actually bred into them and they wanted to pass down through the genetics because of their old past, such as dog fighting. But it's something I see a lot of owners unexpectedly have to deal with. They take their dog to a walk or they take them to the dog park. Their dog is starting to get, you know, very aggressive towards them. They start lunging towards them, not knowing that they have a dog that is naturally dog aggressive. It's in their blood. It's in their genes. So you got to think about this. It could take time to overcome that, you know, a lot of socialization. Sometimes the dogs don't accept it. They just are better off by themselves. So it's something you really got to consider when you're getting your dog. They could be potentially aggressive towards other dogs or animals. 
Now, number five on the list, this is something that you really got to intake if you're thinking about getting a pit bull. These dogs need a lot of care and attention. This is not a kind of dog that you could just, you know, work eight hours and um, you leave them in the crate or at home. They get bored. They have energy. They need a job to do. They need something to do to get all that energy out. They need to go run. They need to take a walk. You can't leave them in the crate. You need to have someone walking them you know, consistently. You can't just leave them there. They need to be fed. They need a lot of attention with their grooming. Their coat needs a lot of attention, especially if you have skin allergies or your dog has skin allergies. They need attention in their mouth. They need teeth cleaning. They need a lot of dental hygiene done to them. Ultimately, they need a job to do. That's just a good point that I want to get across because a lot of owners think you could just set this dog and forget it for a few hours, come back, and it's just an amazing dog that has been sitting there and lazy all day. Maybe there's some dogs out there that, you know, are like that, but the American Pitbull Terrier and ones with the closest genetics to the original American Pitbull Terrier, they're not going to be that way. They're going to want something to do, need exercise, need training, need all this stuff from you. So that's just something to think about if you're searching for a pit bull puppy. I really want to get these five points across because I don't want you getting a dog. It's unexpectedly something that you're not expecting and you take the dog to the pound and the you know it can never get adopted or find a home. It ends up getting put down. That's what we don't want, all right? So leave a comment. Are you in a search for a pit bull puppy? I'm curious. How are you going to handle it? How are you going to train it? Just let me know in the comments. I'm always happy to hear your guys' stories, what you guys are getting, what's out there. It's amazing to me. And this video was not meant to bash the American Pit Bull Terrier or the bully breeds. I just want to bring to light some of the problems that you're going to have to deal with when you get this dog, all right? Amazing dogs, great dogs. If you could overcome all these five problems that I just listed, you're golden. You're good. Uh, I Kudos to you. There's, you know, a lot of good dog owners out there. Don't be a bad one. I will see you guys on the next video. I'm out.